Do you think you would do it again? Not in a hurry. No. I've actually done like five of them. Have I've you done really? like every show. in Australia? <laughs> I, yeah. Really? Sure, yeah. I, I, never, oh I never take it home. I always I, leave my shoes here. I never do that. Man. <laughs> You've been like peer pressured by the Australians. Yeah, like, by the culture. Hi guys, how are you? Good <laughs> Welcome nice to, to Air Any Dirty Laundry. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having us. Um, you just came from Scotland to Australia. Yeah. yeah. Played in Melbourne last night. Yes, we yeah. certainly did. North Coast yeah. Theatre. Yeah, was, how was, was the great. crowd? Yeah, really good. Um, we always find, you know, we always find that Australia and Scotland have so many similarities when it comes to live music and drinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just go together yeah, hand yeah, in yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah. So it was a Thursday night, but people still kind of turned up and <laughs> kind of seen the individual kind of like. Like little, little mosh pits and stuff, totally. so that's nice, yeah. Yeah, I spent one night in Glasgow, we were just talking before we started about how my partner's in a band, but yeah. I went and saw him play in Glasgow. Oh, awesome. And then we went out that night and I was having, I was a bit drunk and everybody was just, Glasgow, <laughs> and I was just like getting into it so hard. It was so much fun, so I know what you mean, like, yeah, I just yeah. kind of felt like a little bit of, I don't know, hear that raucousness, I yeah, suppose. Sure. Yeah, no, I love it. I just wanted to know, could you give me a little idea about like growing up in Scotland and kind of what your childhoods looked like? Pretty great. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that's <laughs> it. It's like, like there's lots of there's lots of beautiful scenery scenery in Scotland kind of connected with lots of tiny little towns and mm -hmm. we were from quite like a small town. There's mm -hmm. like maybe 10,000 people, 11,000 people. It's kind of like ex mining kind of vibe. So there wasn't a lot to do. So we kind of had to amuse ourselves with like, kind of gathering together in forests and maybe mm. having a drink when you weren't meant to and then we, we kind of played guitars. It was like the, in Scotland there's like Ned culture, well there was when we were growing up like Ned, so it's like just, you know, people in full tracksuits and kind of um, anti-social behaviour. Uh -huh. What do you call it? Ned culture? <laughs> no, nobody's called Ned, so it's like just Ned. Like Ned. I, don't like, I don't know if like the English version would be like Yeah, I wonder if it's like, like our lad culture. Yeah, yeah. it's like that, yeah, yeah. Like that, but it's like just kind of like... So it's kind of like two paths, you can kind yeah. of like, to escape these towns, you can kind of like play football or yeah. like play a bit of music. So like we were, we sucked at football. Do you know what's actually funny? The head defender is actually from Hupton as well. So, go, so. so he found a way out as well. I don't even know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's like guitar stuff. So but yeah, okay, no. right, okay. So, yeah like, we kind of like, we grew up together. Like the boys, the other three boys in the band, Calm, the other two went to, nursery. went to like nursery school, which uh -huh. like three year old, they uh -huh. knew each other. And I met the guys when I was like, 10 or something uh -huh. and just like we were playing music from like the age of like 12 at school wow. and stuff like that. All four of you together. Yeah, That's yeah. Amazing. so it's always been like and we just kind of never gave up. Yeah. <laughs> like a little brotherhood really, yeah, that's yeah. so lovely. We've been together yeah, well, like, it's a, so it's a blessing in the course. Oh, <laughs> a lot of time to spend together. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> when we get back together it's like you've reverted to being like 15 at school again and uh -huh. you don't even realise you're like oh my god. It's just kind of nice like it's kind of nice like the, the thing about like because we grew up as kids together, like we've kind of managed to like bring a lot of that childhood into the band, so it's a kind of nice release from mm. adulthood. Yeah, absolutely. And last time I saw you in Australia, you um, did a tradition that I don't love. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I would never do I, I, that. I, I, yeah. I done it right, but I just got a new pair of shoes like that day, and I was like, oh, do a shoe in that. I was like, fucking just got these shoes. Like, I'm like, 100 quid. I was like, I'm not going to a shoe in these shoes. So then somebody else threw me their shoe up and it, it was, was like pretty old looking oh, it, was like the, it was like the worst shoe in the entire like a size 13 do you know i think the guy just brought it oh. with him to throw it me it was oh. disgusting but i think that's the thing that kind of happens like when you, you go to play shows and like especially in new countries because that's obviously like, the yeah. first time there mm. you, can't just, you just wanted to end, <laughs> you just want to be accepted you know you don't know what the, what the cultural barrier is going to be um especially like with our accents we we struggle to like anyone to understand what we're saying so if there's like especially through a microphone, through a microphone even in scotland yeah. you know he can say like a impassioned speech like mm. like a People large just like, like shut up like play a, a song like, <laughs> like, don't have a fucking clue what you're saying yeah, 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 yeah. so i think yeah stuff like that is just like I don't know if you maybe just see people do that and then you go what we're doing that yeah <laughs> do you think you would do it again not in a hurry. No. I've actually done like five of them. Have I've you done really? like every Born show. In Australia? <laughs> I, yeah. I'm really? Sure, yeah. I, I, never, oh I never take it home. I always I, leave my shoes here. I never do that. Man. <laughs> You've been like peer pressured by the Australians. Yeah, like, by the culture. It's horrible. And I think that, I think it's like 50 50. I do think like 50% of Australians hate it and like 50% yeah. love it. Yeah, I don't know why people love it. It's so disgusting. It is awful. <laughs> in Scotland, you know, like, like here we fucking go thing. That's yeah. kind of like that too. It's like loads of people in Scotland absolutely love that. But loads of people all the way through it. They say, here we fucking go. Right? Here we fucking go, like, for every tune. Really? <laughs> well, while you're playing the song? Pretty much, yeah. They kind of do it out of time and stuff yeah. like that. It's super unhelpful. Yeah, does, yeah, does that throw you off while you're... Big time. Yeah. Oh, my 
my gosh. But yeah, no, the show, I mean, I don't think that will happen this no, time round. Definitely. Yeah. Not. We're actually we're not drinking anymore. Well, we're still drinking, but we're not drinking on stage anymore. Okay. For the first time in like 10 years or something. What, <laughs> so, um, why? why? I think we just play it better now, you know, I yeah. think because we've been playing, like I say, we've been playing for so long. Um, I think, you know, we just started realising, like, we're actually getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, like, we're trying to be a better band, but we're getting worse every night, so... So, yeah, just kind of try to do it sober. Have you changed anything on your rider at all to match that? Yeah, uh, we got alcohol, free beer, um, oh, it's just and... like, embarrassing, don't put any of this in, man. Aye. <laughs> uh, uh, just uh, hardcore drugs uh, now. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, just, <laughs> just fucking cool, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just wild. It's always, it's after the after you play, yeah, that's yeah, when yeah, you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, to be fair, I've actually been out since I arrived. <laughs> I know, I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, really? This is like the first I've seen him apart from the show. <laughs> really? I've been out for days. Where yeah. did you go out in Melbourne last night? Um, yeah, I've got family there, so I went and seen them the first day, and then went out last night, to be fair. I actually, I was home quite early, but I tried to stay up. Like, I was like, I'm going to get a real good sleep, I'm going to stay up. And I, like, stayed up past the point of, like, you know, when the jet lag kicked back uh -huh. in. So it was, like, three in the morning, I was sitting like, I'll get to sleep now. And I was like, all right, that's me. Oh, I just yeah. sat up in my room. Just... So you haven't slept? No. Uh, no, I, I slept. So I slept for two hours this morning before, and I slept in the flight. So, so you're probably going to say some really wacky shit to me. And Thank you already yeah. has. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I said that. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> totally. Um, Growing up, well, I suppose the music scene maybe in Scotland compared to all the parallels drawn with this music scene here, because for Australians, we have to, if we want to make it overseas, you kind of have to leave the country, obviously, yeah. and we're so far away from the rest of the world. Is it sort of similar in Scotland? Like, do you feel like you have to leave the country to be able to show yourself, or is it easy? I don't know. I think so. I think, like, you know, being a Scottish band, then probably I would imagine Australian bands feel similar. There's almost like a there's like sometimes like there's like a bit of a ceiling um, yeah, as a band that you kind of struggle to kind of punch through. There'll always be like you know like so English bands kind of generally take precedent in the UK of like you know what they can do and the opportunities that are given them. I think you know Scottish bands have to work a bit harder and go mm -hmm. a bit go a bit further and play more and do more and try and connect a bit more. I think to get a lot of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether that's the same in here in the studio, yeah, yeah, but definitely. yeah, I think that I can imagine it would be. Mm -hmm, definitely. You were the first Scottish band in, like, was it 14 years? To, yeah, yeah. What was the, what was the record there? It's like, it's like a number, number one, one, yeah. one yeah. album, yeah. In the UK? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that must have been amazing it's crazy. feeling. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. We got it like 200 record, like 200 CDs or something we won it by. Yeah, we, thought we, we thought we'd lost. We actually thought wow. we'd lost the night before because they, we were up against Emily Lovato and she registered like 5,000 sales that night and we were like, well, that's it, the ball's burst. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And then the head of the label at the time phoned him in the morning and was like, ah, it was a good run in that, like, we nearly had it and that. And then he was like, oh, and he was like, only joking. <laughs> and then we oh got my it God, and you beat Demi Lovato. I was actually yeah. reading online about that because uh, it said somewhere that you were getting, like, threats yeah, from, from her they, fans. They hacked yeah, their managers, that. like, uh, Twitter and stuff. They kept trying to hack his Twitter and, like, say mad shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's that, like, because, again, like, that was probably, like, maybe three, four years ago or something yeah. like that. And I think it was before you seen like such an influx of like proper fandom. Mm. You stand, what we call that like on the internet? On the internet, like where like you're seeing like huge groups of like one yeah, one yeah, fan yeah. of one person yeah. like come together. So we were like totally we we're just like a wee band for Scotland and just getting absolutely overrun by like thousands of like teenage yeah, girls on Twitter like too. trying to kill us, man. It was crazy as well because like uh, like Lewis Capaldi's from the same time as a town as us. So mm -hmm. he kinda like tweeted to support us and then Louis Tomlinson tweeted to support us. But then all their fans started arguing with each other. So it was like Louis stands arguing with Louis stands, <laughs> arguing with Demi Lovato stands about this band for platform. No, <laughs> nobody's ever heard, heard of. <laughs> so it actually done wonders for yeah, our, our short battle. Like it actually made it quite. Totally. Good. It was a good. It was good. Like at the time, you know, it was like a big achievement for us. I think it was like one of our big goals. It's something that we wanted to do. That like at the time, nobody was, no guitar bands were doing that. Like mm. charting well and stuff like that. And the, the system is like stacked against guitar bands mm -hmm. in the charting world, you know, when it comes to like streaming and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So it was like a cool achievement and it was nice because I think it kind of paved the way for a few bands after us to go yeah. in and like see how, how you can actually do that, Definitely. which has been cool. I always, I think that sometimes by looking at the charts, how many solo artists there are than pop artists, and of course pop popular music, it makes sense, yeah, but yeah. 
bands you just don't see them kind of appearing so it is such an achievement really For sure. yeah and then also now with the um okay why don't you say rob thomas it's not rob thomas it's rod stewart oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, like, rod, the yeah. rod stewart battle we honestly we nearly had time as well yeah, so we've been on demo lovato and then we had george michael on the second record and that's rod stewart. oh i didn't know about george michael yeah, the second record he absolutely destroyed oh, us and oh. rod stewart also absolutely we, destroyed us he sold the same and then in the first week but then he sold the same for yeah, like five well, weeks and it was good though but the rod stewart one was quite fun because I think once we'd like got a number one record the first time round, I kind of felt like we'd done that and it was like, I mean, no, like, you know, I think as kids we probably expected a number one record like change your life and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but it doesn't in this day and age. So we're kind of like, we'd accepted yeah. that and we're still like, we're still doing what we love. Yeah. Um. So like when we got to like the Rod Stewart battle, we're like, oh, we got again, but we had a show in Glasgow the week of like the album coming out and stuff. Um, so like we hired like a Rod Stewart impersonator. Did you really? And got him up like <laughs> in the middle of the yeah. show and like but it was really convincing. So like all the newspapers in Scotland were all writing like Rod Stewart's turned up here in Glasgow. Like, and it made the sense show and because, stuff like it, because it was a Celtic game or something that uh, week as well and he comes back for the Celtic <laughs> games. So like every, like the Sun newspapers is just like an absolute rag in, in Scotland. We're reporting before we'd even got home, like Rod quotes, Stewart's quotes from member the members of the band that are meant to like, and they never spoke to anyone. Awesome, man! So, so, and I was like, that was just more satisfying than anything. Just oh. like to know that we can like have a bit of fun with it. And he was like, it was like a Rod Stewart impersonator, and his wife had came up, so we, like paid for them to come up and put them in a hotel and stuff. But they were still like, they understood that it was kind of like a joke. But they weren't happy about it, so it was like this really bitter encounter or yeah. half of my thing. Until the, after the second show, like when he got his, because he got, must have got some buzz, like because it was like maybe eighteen hundred people, like all singing Maggie Mae at the same time. He used to play to like thirty grannies. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my goodness, that's so funny. So it was awesome. It was good fun. Do Do you think Rod Stewart has seen that head, like those headlines? They're quite bad as yeah. well about doing it. See, like my said, that's a bowl of whiskey and stuff <laughs> before, oh, like, right, like a oh. hundred. A few months before but... we had another show in Glasgow. It was like our biggest shows ever. Like these. Outdoor shows that we put on, um, and he'd like sent us a bottle of whiskey. Like I'm a huge fan and stuff like that. Have it's a great really show. Nice and then stuff. a couple of months later, we were like <laughs> fucking dragging him. It's actually much. this guy's fault. He's, uh, he, he's a mastermind. Uh, man. Oh, he's, he's I a, mean, he's well an evil done. Man it's a great idea. idea. It's funny. It's good fun. So yeah. no, like we dragged him through the muck a bit, but also like he's had his fair share, and I think it's like. I do have an issue with like just like legacy acts just keeping releasing these albums mm. after like the albums like fully cover songs and stuff like mm -hmm. we sweated over our records mm -hmm. like totally <laughs> totally kind of thing but again it is what it is yeah it's good that, fun that is interesting that you say that like they have had their sort of moment and yeah, everything I think so, man. yeah i think it's as we see it like again like i think you see it, like at festivals and stuff like that like it's really hard for like new talent to come through and break through those barriers when like the headliners every year are like these old old acts I'm not yeah. like trying to be ageist yeah. about it but like you know in, in a way that like we it don't need the same people headlining every festival mm -hmm. every year ones who have been headlining it since the 90s and stuff like yeah. that it's like I think you need to show young young artists that there's there's space for them to kind of achieve that level in a sense yeah absolutely I think as well like you know social media being so overly like influxed with you know everybody's on social media so and it's like billions of videos and photos and whatever uploaded so to get recognised there now is really difficult. Yeah, yeah, and awesome. then if you're not getting those slots on festivals or whatever, sure. like it is so important for young emerging artists to be able to play those sorts sure. of things. And to be able to see like like bands as well and artists that they like doing that as well. I think that was so important for us growing up really you know, we grew up being so active, like going to live music and seeing bands and artists do what we wanted to do yeah. and that you need to see as much of that as possible to actually believe that you have a chance to to being able to do that and stuff absolutely, like that. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I feel we feel so bad for like, I think we came at a good time just before like this crazy crash of the, the music talk. industry yeah. because like we didn't have to mm -hmm. go wild. We could kind of just be ourselves on social media and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there was never a crazy amount of pressure around it. And there still isn't for us. Like we'll take like two months off and no social media and stuff like that. But like for a young artist now where like the venues aren't there for them, like the slots aren't there for them, they've got to be on that 24-7 and just hope that someone's yeah. going to care. Yeah. Let's talk about your album, Millennials. Yeah. Because you guys are Millennials. What does that mean to you? I think like being a Millennial now is pretty crazy. Like I feel like as a generation, we've kind of like survived like pandemics now yeah, and yeah, like a lot of like uh, big massive like financial crashes and like cost of living and stuff like that. And I think like it's like the way, like emergency social media that we talk about a lot like I think it's just been like a really confusing yeah. time to be like growing up and stuff like that yeah and um, I think like now as well like probably the generation just before us 
doesn't really speak about like their feelings or anything <laughs> like that. We're a, we're a generation now that's like obviously you know coming to terms with like speaking about stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think you know as we were making the record, and um, we decided like we didn't want to be like try and be too ahead of the ball or like too current or anything. We wanted to kind of like dip back into some of like our emotions and experiences mm -hmm. that would maybe like glossed over as mm -hmm. a band. You know I think maybe by trying to be too cool and stuff like that at times. So yeah, as these songs were being written, I think there was a kind of common theme that these were like, you know, like highlights and lowlights mm -hmm. um, of like growing up, like mm -hmm. and what it meant for us to kind of be millennials or whatever. Um, so yeah, that was kind of that. Yeah, it's an interesting generation because we're kind of like the last generation to remember what it was like without sort of yeah. all of you know yeah. where we are now, social media, everything. You know, I think I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't have kids, but we weren't looking at screens like they yeah, are now. Yeah. We were outside playing and yeah. we were entertaining ourselves in any way. I saw a TikTok the other day and this dad was like to his kid, he was like, you're grounded, but the grounding was that you had to go outside and like <laughs> not be inside the house. Crazy, <laughs> yeah, and the kid stood at the, at the window being like, dad, can I come inside? And he's like, no, you can't come inside. And he's like, well, what am I meant to do out here? He's like, I don't know, go find a stick. Like, <laughs> just do something. Like we used to make fun out of whatever yeah. we could find. So it is interesting, like, I feel very lucky that we were able to kind sure. of grow up in that space as well. For sure. How do you think we differ from Gen Z? Um, I mean, I think, you know, like, I think something that we kind of realised a lot as we were making the record that there wasn't actually, like, emotionally, I think we're very similar. And mm. I think we wanted to try and, you know, we weren't trying to make a record just for millennials yeah. or whatever. Um, but, you know, I think that, like, no matter, like, what you're going through, like, what kind of part of, uh, kind of era, in time or whatever you're, go, uh, you're growing up in, I think you're faced with like very similar problems. And mm -hmm. it's just like whether we choose to like talk about them or deal with them. Mm -hmm. um, I do think like, you know, when you see young people now, I think they're way more, way more open and way more willing to kind of like yeah, talk to each other and stuff like that about things that are important. Um, and I think they have got that passion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in them as well about a lot of things. I just think it's a shame, like, I think they get. If we felt like we were up against it, mm -hmm. or are up against it, like I think again, yeah, like yeah. I can come back to like young artists and stuff like that. I think they're so up against it. Yeah. You know, like I think like the only, maybe like you know, they want to kind of express themselves in like the same way that we've been allowed to express ourselves, and they're kind of up against like someone down on just going to covers on yeah. TikTok or like you know you're gonna you're gonna be much more successful if you just go sing someone else's song, yeah. and then maybe that moment will happen for a bit for them, and then it will crash again, and then they kind of lose that lose that motivation mm -hmm. uh, so yeah I actually feel like no I sound like an old guy but I feel quite bad you know for, mm -hmm. for young people I think you know if we thought it was difficult they must find it so hard. You've written three albums between 21 and 24 which is quite a fast turnaround has that yeah. uh, I don't know talk me through like what the the desire was to kind of pump them out so quickly or like how did that yeah. I don't know if happen. it's as much a, a desire or if it's just kind of the way that you like the way music's presented now on streaming services, it's mm -hmm. like you kind of have to mm -hmm. keep your output up to to, to stay yeah. relevant almost. Like, you know, you need to be releasing new music or like the next month somebody else is the mm. new flavour. So it's like a, a, a lot of... It used to be a band could go away for four years and really yeah. craft an album and like spend time and, you know, maybe have like 50 songs and then mm -hmm. whittle it down. But what we found in like a major label system is like, Right, get 13 tracks done and let's go. So that was a huge part of the reason, I think, as well. And just like the momentum, I think, as well. Yeah, mem yeah. Like yeah. the momentum of band, like, because we were like, like, we made these three records in three years kind of thing, but we were on the road the whole time mm -hmm. as well, and writing on the road, recording on the road and stuff like that. And I think it was just to, we needed new music to keep that, to keep that going, you know, I think for ourselves as well, I think it's so important that you enjoy what you're doing out here. Like, that's the reason that, like, you want to, to play music and yeah. not do your 95 kind of thing. Um, so I think like the momentum of like, we need new songs to kind of get to this next Next's point. You know, we've got like, you know, we've got venues in mind and we're not there yet or whatever with the songs we have. Like we need to kind of up our game and get yeah. new songs, uh, try and get better. I think, you know, we've always treated this band like, uh, because we like we, we worked for so long before yeah. we started doing this full time. It's always, this is like, this is our job. Mm -hmm. So like we treat it like the craft and like try to get better mm -hmm. and try and make the songs better, try and be a better, better performers yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think just like the whole momentum of being on the road mm -hmm. the whole time, it's like mm -hmm. just forced us into just making yeah. these albums and it's been fun as well. I think we'll take some time though, next time. Do you think this is your favourite album that you've written? 
Um, I don't know. I, th I think they all kind of have like different places in your yeah. heart. Like I don't mm -hmm. think I could really choose. Uh, like a choose baby, a, you don't have a good yeah, child. Yeah, yeah, it's mad because some of the tracks in the first record were like demos and EPs that we've been playing for like ten years already. So then you play these new tracks and they become your favourite for a bit. But it's always like you can never choose a favourite child. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> this would be my favourite. Like in terms of like it's uh, like the process of making this record compared to like our first two records we were signed to like a major label. So mm -hmm. it was like we were told like you're going here and you're going to meet this guy, this producer, and it's going to be in this studio, and you've got two weeks, and then you've got another two weeks to make the record. And that happened with both our first, first and second records, so like there was this crazy pressure that came with that. Mm. So the third record, you know, we decided to do it on our own. Um, we decided to produce it on our own with one of our good friends. So it's just like, and we've done it in Scotland as well. Our first mm -hmm. record we'd made in Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just much more like, it was much more free. We were in control, no one was telling us like, this is a single, this isn't a single, mm. like just kind of made all the calls, which mm. is like, it was rare for us in the way that we'd kind of entered the music industry. It was mm. rare to be making every decision, um, but it was nice. So for me, yeah, I loved, I loved making this record. Um, yeah. It was just fun and there's no pressure. Yeah, that's just cool. I do think though that we'd have never got to this point like without the other two. Oh, no. I mean, so it was like you almost like learned everything. Mm -hmm. And these first like we two, to, learn. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. to actually like, be free on the third. Do you know what I mean? So That's it was like, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was like a quite like a give and take kind of oh, like, yeah. situation, which is cool. Because you were just saying you wrote this one in Scotland, and yeah. you've said that you haven't been able to do that since you were kids. Yeah. So the first two albums you didn't write in Scotland. We maybe like wrote some yeah, like here and there, but like recording wise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like recording wise was always like uh, LA. England and LA and stuff. Yeah. Actually. The, the thing I really love about this record as well, like we started millennials in uh, up north in Scotland mm -hmm. and we were proper like cooked away on like a little farm in the middle of nowhere, like mm -hmm. there was no shops, no pubs and stuff. But then again, like we're straight back on the road. So there's like, uh, there's lots of like vocals and guitars that are like recorded in Melbourne, Sydney, oh, cool. uh, like hotel sure. rooms. Oh, really? Sure. Uh, there's like, there's loads, of, loads of Australia on that record because we were on tour at the time. Uh, actually, probably going to a studio tonight where we've done some of the like vocals on like Millionaires which is a single on it. Oh, cool. So it's cool like and there's like loads of the world there's like Japan on that record there's like mm -hmm. Europe mm -hmm. uh, there's America Mexico. so Mexico like oh, we, wow. just, we just everywhere we went like we had to finish this record so uh -huh. we just did it in hotel rooms or studios and days off. Is that stressful? No it was fun yeah. it was just it was, like it kept like the, the songs were really fast on the record and uh -huh. I think it's because like we were living so fast and like just bouncing between places and try to get it done. Yeah. But it was fun, I think like it's a fun, it's like a most fun record. Oh, definitely. Nearly, fun, fun. nearly called it a funnest. <laughs> it's, most, it's a funniest, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but it is, it is, it's so fun to play as well. Yeah. And it is, it's like kind of carefree and just like, just feel good. Totally. Uh, yeah, I get, I get that from it, for sure. And our previous record was like pretty heavy well, and the promotion mm -hmm. and that, like, we were reading some mad shit. Like we were, able, like we were down a rabbit hole. And we were just in deep as well. Like yeah. we were angry and stuff. Like we wrote our second record during lockdown and stuff. Yeah. So and everybody was angry and like that was our outlet mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, hundred percent. And you, but, you can hear that, like yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, super. Yeah. But you can even notice that translate to live shows. Like, like it was quite an aggressive energy at points. Mm -hmm. So it's nice now just to have these kind of like heart in your sleeve tracks that yeah. like you can just see folk having a good time. You're having a good time, and it's just like a like a positive release of energy rather than being like, fuck everything. Yes, yeah, 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 definitely. Do you, feel, do you feel the crowd's different, like, from the second to the third? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think you have to change with your crowd as well. Like, it's a funny one, I think, again, like, when, you, when you're, when you like, four kind of white guys with guitars and the band, people are always going to say, like, this is who you are and, like, this is your type of crowd. And, like, our crowd has always been, like, super inclusive, super different. There's never mm -hmm. been, like, two of the same type yeah, of yeah. person at our That's crowd. Cool. And we've always kind of, like, pride ourselves on that. And it, and the more we play and the years go on, like the more it changes and adapts and the more people come into yeah. it. So it's like not for like one type of person. So I think it's like important that we always like change and develop with yeah. that crowd and like make it like one, make it just That's so really that, nice. Like yeah. celebrate just like being yourself and come yeah. one, come all, whoever. I think that's it. Yeah. In the UK, like I say, I feel like if you're four guys yeah. with guitars, people go like, this is who you are. Mm -hmm. Like this is the type of bands that you're like without even hearing you. Like mm -hmm. you dress like this, you must sound like this, you must think like this or whatever. Um, so I think yeah, we've been lucky enough to kind of develop and just try and be like adapt, yeah. uh, adapt with our crowd and they adapt with us and it's kind of cool. So do you write all the lyrics, Jack? You write everything? Most of the lyrics, yeah. And like I, on this record, uh, a, a guy, Scott Anderson, who produced the record with me, uh, he's like our MD, he does all our live show and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and just one of our really close friends. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we just like let him into this process and he brought so much to it. And 
he would do a bit of writing, like a lot of the writing with me, and yeah. we'd just sit in the morning and just really fine tune on the lyrics. And I think, like, with this record especially, like, what Scott was great at bringing to the, the process for me was, like, to almost, like, just make things a bit clearer lyrically. I think in yeah. the past, like, when you write songs, I think maybe you think that people are going to understand things that, because you, because it makes sense to you, you think everybody will be able to interpret yeah. that. But for this one, I wanted to try and make it really clear from, like, the first time you hear it. Yeah. You know, as, as long as, like, I want that line to connect the way that it should mm -hmm. not have to be interpreted and listened again. So Scott was great at doing that. Yeah. But yeah, we all just like we all just chip in. It's always been like I'll write write songs and lyrics and themes and the boys will just bring everything to mm -hmm. it and just kind of just crack away at it kind of thing. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because I definitely got that from this album. Like it, the way that you express yourself lyrically is very direct. Yeah. Um, and I really feel like it's a really lovely. Like I love lyrics. I'm like such a awesome. lyricist. Like I don't know. I love obviously the rest of the music as well. But when when songs are written in a way, I, and I feel like definitely when you say that, I can feel the nice. directness. There were some lyrics I actually wanted to read out to you so that I'm going to get them right. So in Gloria, you said we're so in love that it's ordinary. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, what does ordinary love mean to you? I think it was the whole, like, uh, like that's almost kind of, like, supposed to be this, like, kind of, like, semi, semi-fictional story. So, we're, like, I wanted to kind of, like, dip into my own experience of what I think that is and, like, kind of put it into the, the story of, like, two characters. Because mm -hmm. I think, like, again, like, I think our generation or, like, where we are in the world right now, like, we're kind of get, like, hyper fixated on this idea of, like, things have to be this, like, kind of, glamorous kind of Hollywood love story for it like mm -hmm. to be real and there needs to be so much like kind of flares of emotion but like a, I really like the idea of like this like this really like, normal like love story where people are just like properly there for each other yeah and like they don't like there's no outside noise to that um mm -hmm. and it's just like this this thing that like to look at from a distance might seem like this this isn't it's nothing to shout home about but like when you're in it it's mm -hmm. like this really awesome thing mm -hmm. so that's like what I to try and get that with like the word like ordinary I think it's just like People would think that's quite a shit thing, or don't they? Yeah. But I don't know. No, it's a good I don't think man. so. I don't think so. I think when you're, I don't know, you know, you can. I was saying like just before to somebody today, actually, like how I didn't ever know if I was going to get married or not, but I didn't really mind because I was in a relationship that was just content and, mm -hmm. and I felt very loved and cherished. Yeah. And it wasn't, there's, you know, we've been together for 10 years, so the, it's not that we're not. There's just the fireworks and the spark of the start isn't really, you know, it, we've come into this beautiful place of like this ordinary mm -hmm. like That's exactly life. it. Yeah. You know, and I think I think we should like celebrate more of that. And mm. um, I think maybe people put a lot of pressure on for like relationships to be more than mm -hmm. than what like humans are capable mm -hmm. of in a sense or like or to look like it's more or something like that. I think, you know, it's very like now posting each other and this and this and this, mm. but I think it's like you can get like the foundation solid and mm. you get a really nice thing that's like really worth having. Yeah, it's funny you say posting each other because like I would sometimes be like, why is there never a photo post of me? But I think it's almost like I'd rather that to, in yeah, a way, you know, because sure. I know that like the, you know, the relationship is amazing that's and it, everything and it doesn't matter what like the outside world for thinks sure. of it. Yeah. So you're not like kind of looking for uh, validation, kind of, like, eye validation mm -hmm. or that, stuff like that. I think just like that kind of ordinary thing is like, I'd be like, cool thing. I wanted to ask you about your track, Deep Diving. You say, smiling on the surface because you're way too proud. Can you talk to me about where that lyric came from? Yeah, I think, like, again, that song, like, a lot of the records, like, kind of either, like, semi-personal or, like, more observational. And I think that was, like, kind of try to, try to, like, delve into, you know, like, a lot of kind of, like, male culture that I've grew up around where like, you know, like the life of the party and stuff mm. like that and the person you know is like at 3 a.m. is kind of like internally like the saddest guy at the party and stuff like that and again it's like something that we probably need to talk about more and stuff mm -hmm. like that and I felt like the this song was kind of like a place that we could go there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like just like what's on the inside, they like a smiling face um, mm -hmm. and I think it's very like, again I can only speak from like experience mm -hmm. and from like Again, like observation and stuff like that, but especially like on young males and stuff like that, it's so prominent. Like that, mm. that mm. like uh, you know, like what's the word? Like you no, know, not wanting to talk about stuff like that. I think so. Like yeah, I was getting again. It's, it's probably the only song on the record that has got like a kind of dark on. Yeah. But again, like we're talking about like the highlights and the lowlights of this record yeah. and that and growing up and stuff. And I think we must include this kind of thing. Yeah, I really love that on the record. Like, honestly, like the honesty that is on this record. I really, really, I mean, like I said before, just when you hear songs and that you can relate to and things like that. And I think 
probably your audience as well would be, you know, it just makes sure. you feel not so alone yeah. and seeing yeah, and, sure. and to, I think the whole thing just ties together so well with the being a millennial talking about, uh-huh. it just, it's really great. Really feeling really uncomfortable, I think like making, like you say, like being more direct with this record that is uncomfortable to do. Mm. Cause you want to kind of like, hide behind like really cool stuff and yeah. but again like we presented something like we wanted to present something that was like really direct lyrically and musically we wanted it to be like uplifting and popular yeah. and stuff like that and not mm-hmm. have like this kind of like maybe like indie band pressure that probably indie bands feel like they have to kind of sound like or yeah. do or, yeah. or be like or look like so yeah it was a fun record like we learned a lot from it yeah. So you guys have gone independent and you've left Parlophone and I just want to read out a quote. I'm not sure who said this. One of you guys said it, but you said it's not about the music. It's about how your personality comes across on these platforms and the correlation between the platform and your streaming, mm-hmm. which I'm like, it means social media and things. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Just that quote in general? Yeah, um, I, think, I think it's like, a, again, like we've kind of been through so many, I think we've been playing for, I think when did we get signed? Like six years ago, seven years ago or something. So like we've like seen how quickly like a new platform can kind of come and just like really Change mess up it. everything and like sometimes it's great because it can help for the better but it's been a long time since it feels like a platform's almost done that or like it's maybe exhausted what like social media can do in a sense mm-hmm. for young artists mm-hmm. um, and it got to a point like where we were making music and we were bringing it to the label and it was like not even listening to it to a sense yeah, you know it's just yeah, like right. it's like how do, how are we going to promote this on this platform like here's you know, X, Y, and Z artists that are doing well on this platform, can you go away and create a video like that? Really, yeah. yeah. I actually got told like, to go and study the charts yeah. and then study the top 40 and then watch their TikToks. Ah, uh, and saying that and then that, that and then, and that, that'll and get you to the next step. And we're just like, we're getting to the point where like, that's like, that's not fun. And like, we yeah. do have to try and be fun. And yeah. like, you know, if we wanted to, we just wouldn't do this. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. going to be all yeah. the time. And I think like, we were in a point where like, we were, like we were doing well live and stuff like that. We were playing the shows that we wanted to be playing. Like, I just felt like confident enough to. At this point, we had no new music, so it was kind of like a, a bold move. But mm-hmm. we're just like, let's just get out of here. It's like a, a toxic environment. Our main jobs weren't like being musicians anymore. It was like try to be like our own like marketing managers and like. I also like just don't want. I think as a band and as like humans, we didn't want to live a life that like was a whole life had to be on social media. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to wake up in the morning and tell people like, like this is what I'm doing in my day and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. why well, have like a, a level of privacy and stuff like that as well. Like yeah. so that it's just it, the whole thing was just getting far too geared towards yeah. like we'd much rather like you were more like a reality reality kind of person, yeah. like whatever whatever that means yeah. than like a musician. And the less you feel like a musician, the less you want to yeah. to do it this as a job. So yeah. we just like let's get out of here. Yeah. Um and it worked out like well I think we have yeah. much more control. Um I think like we'll feel the pressures less of social media mm-hmm. now that no one's telling us to feel the pressures of it. Yeah. Like there's there will still be people around us who are like, oh, I wish the boys would like post more on Instagram, or I wish they would take TikTok seriously or whatever. But I also like I just don't think you need to. And like I wish more like more like bigger like bigger art, a lot bigger artists than us would like kinda express that mm-hmm. and say like you don't need to be that person, you don't need to do that. Like and maybe it's a bit uh naive or something or may think that you don't need to but yeah. I, I do think that like people come to your shows regardless of what we're doing yeah. on the internet and I think like that's so important people yeah, listen to our music yeah. regardless the music is like speaking it. for itself yeah I think so yeah. I think, and I think that it's, the music still has that power I think as well like see for every five bands that make it big from TikTok there's literally a hundred thousand that, that are just don't, making man. videos yeah. every day yeah. and like oh, making man. themselves feel so shit yeah. because they're not getting the likes and they're not hitting the the viral moment and everything's a moment and mm-hmm. everything needs to be done in a moment but a moment once a moment's done it's done mm-hmm. and then you're chasing the next viral mm-hmm. moment mm-hmm. and that's a vicious cycle yeah like, we it, hear that man like yeah, that's yeah, just like yeah. if it, even the thought of having to go through that i'm like no, no way, man. i, I, I get like, that oh, no. i really really and i really think really it's maybe like it's maybe like a confidence thing from us like maybe we come from a place and like like where we grew up and stuff like that you're not going to put yourself on a camera and and kind of like go da 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 because that's like not what our job yeah, is yeah. does in a sense like even going on stage is like that's a pretty vulnerable position yeah. to be in so it's like we do that we do that and that's <laughs> that's, that's, right. our, do, yeah. that's what we want to do in that sense so but yeah so like i think and we see you've seen it all across the board that artists are moving towards like this more independent thing because it was actually we were in a meeting with the major label they were saying stuff like that saying stuff like uh like just imagine there's no marketing team here 
you're your own marketing team, and then we're just like, they, they say the but magic, there is they, a marketing they, they, team. We're like, why don't we just do that? You're on an independent label. That's what you need to do. And then yeah. we were like, hmm. Like, <laughs> then we started imagining, and then we were like, all right, that would actually the movie. Uh, totally. It was just stupid memes. We're having like stupid memes with like stupid old guys. And dressed like, like so, like a just, fifteen just like year old man, dressed guys. like a twenty-five year old man, <laughs> yeah. with, like, like two pairs of laces in his shoes, and mm-hmm. like, you know, just like uh, just having these stupid memes with them arguing back and forth, and like saying stuff like like the music doesn't fucking matter and stuff like that. And we're just like, oh, is, they said that. Ah, I was like, this is boring. At this point, like, we're mm-hmm. never going to agree that's, on this. Yeah, absolutely. And not. I like it again. It's just like that's the way that it's all it is going that way. Like, so it's yeah. just. And it's obviously like the biggest songs in the last like three years will yeah. definitely all of came for like TikTok moments. Yeah. So like there's no, I mean, I'm not saying that everybody has to do it the way that we are in a sense doing yeah. it. Like yeah. that's, And if TikTok's gotta, working yeah. for you and you enjoy doing it, then you well, do you it. just got to do what feels right for you. For sure, that's 100%. it. And that for us like wasn't what was right for us. So, mm-hmm. yeah, But also like don't just do the TikTok thing, you know, you should still be out like do the small venues, like cut yeah. your teeth in a, like a, in a yeah. physical sense yeah. as well because like, you can see a lot of people come in their first gigs at a festival in front of 25,000 yeah. folk because yeah. they blew up on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. I see a and great shit the bed on the stage yeah. because like you've never, you know, the playback will go wrong or something yeah. and suddenly somebody just gets exposed totally. and it's like... Yeah, All of a sudden, that's very true actually. Yeah, and it, but then you're dealing with the mental pressure of that so you've mm. bared your soul on a social media platform that's not got to save you in mm. reality no, yeah. when you're up there and people are fucking throwing coins at you and stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> do you know totally. what? So it's like... Totally. It definitely, like, you, need to, you need to do both. Mm. I see, but it's harder now though because like the path is just to go on social media and once you do that well then now we can get you a gig like even yeah. promoters are more looking yeah. for social media but i seen this great thing like yesterday and it's like must be like a uk article so i don't know how relevant it is to you but i know you guys have just had like splendor cancelled and stuff yeah. like that but there's like uh i think there's something like 42 festivals have been cancelled in the uk this really? year which is a crazy amount for like that how is. smaller country is yeah um and um so it's like the guy i think he's like heavy like the venue trust saying that like because all the small venues are now shutting so None of that. None of these young artists are getting a chance to go cut their teeth and get a live. Like we built up our whole audience from playing live, mm-hmm. mostly and maybe a bit of like a bit of social media. Yeah, yeah. But all my life play live, and the guys saying like, you know, when these huge artists, I just come on these things and just trash huge artists. But mm-hmm. he's like, when huge artists are coming for your city, you know, like when like your Taylor Swifts are coming and Coldplay's are coming and they're playing like three nights at the stadium. Like what what they propose is like the venue trust like taxes them a part of the profit and it goes back to the venues to put. That's like the lights back on I'm like you know what they can't afford probably to do that in a sense and yeah. it'd be nice like to see like people make those conscious decisions because you, you want to see your next Taylor Swift and you want to see your next Coldplay's coming through mm-hmm. and if they don't get a chance to go and play the like, pubs and the clubs and stuff like that because they don't exist mm-hmm. you're kind of going to be struggling yeah there's something in Australia now I can't remember it's I think it's like Matthew's rule or something and it's it's not a law but they're trying to push it out so that when the Taylor Swift or the Coldplay or whoever do come through that, you know, Taylor Swift just brought Sabrina Carpenter to support yeah, yeah. her. But not have her do that and have her have an Australian yeah, act yeah, as the support. Sense, yeah. um, because we are having a lot of festivals cancelled here. We are yeah. having venues shutting down here. So where are these young emerging artists going? That's it. And so, yeah. I think it's exciting. I think those conversations are exciting um, like to be having, you know. Mm. Australia's really good as well, like, because it's so hard. It's so expensive to travel. And I think, I mean, I might be wrong here, but... You get like allowances on baggage and stuff yeah. like that as a musician mm-hmm. in Australia. Yeah, yeah, Virgin do it. That's that's yeah. unreal. Like in yeah. in the UK and like America, you just, just don't like, get you that. Don't get that. Just need no to way. Tap your card wow. and I'm like fucking just. So to bring all your stuff yeah. over would have cost quite a lot. We brought like yeah. we brought like twenty six, twenty seven cases or something yeah. like that. So it's like, but that's awesome. So when we're jumping from, um, like Melbourne to Sydney, like you're getting this wee bit extra, and that just helps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so now you guys are smashing that. Yeah, no, that is cool. I hadn't actually thought of that. I didn't know that that didn't <laughs> exist awesome. everywhere. I just thought, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, that is very yeah, cool. Yeah, just, I just come in with the deep topics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Love <laughs> <laughs> Hand it hard. In 2021, you released Somebody Loves You, and that was in support of the Scottish Refugee Council. Yeah. Um, and then you donated the profits of that music video, or? Well, what we done, it was actually about such a great situation. We kind of put our label, like, kind of against the wall with it. We said, like, what we'd like to do is like you give us ten grand or something. I give us. We'll record the video. We'll record yeah. the video yeah. and like the give the money to the, yeah. the charity, and they were kind of like, oh well, we're self righteous and stuff. <laughs> yeah, we have to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that was cool, and like just got to like meet some great people through that, and like raise a bit of awareness, and we've done a little bit like done yeah. a bit since. Yeah. You know, it's kind yeah. of something yeah. that's came with us, like gigs, come to the gigs. We do like the collection boxes, the guest lists, and stuff like that. Goes to these charities. But it's cool. It just like opened our eyes to like a 
to a piece of like our, our city that we were staying in yeah. at the time that we knew nothing about mm -hmm. um, and managed to like and with that song and video we all kind of got a chance to open up to that. I think it was great as well because it was obviously like, it was like the refugees themselves that shot they were, they were comfortable being in the video that shot the video mm -hmm. so, so it really like like it like it really kind of inspired a creative streak in them and like really kind of got them like maybe doing something that they maybe necessarily wouldn't do when they mm. just came to a new country and kind of kind of took them away from mm -hmm. the maybe the, the stress and pressure of mm -hmm. the situation they were in and just got them to, to be a bit creative. And that it's was so cool, wasn't it? Like, yeah. it, it feels like a while ago, like, but I remember like what we were doing, the plan was like, it was just said, like, said to the charity, like, you know, don't need to, we don't need to meet anybody or nobody yeah. has to kind of whatever, but it's like, this is what the song means to us. This is what we're trying to say is like, mm. if you could like relay that message to the people that you're helping in mm. the city and find out if anybody wants to, you know, be a part of this video and show what, like, you know, it's like the whole song's like somebody loves you, so remember somebody's always going to be there. I mean, yeah. it's struggling, it's like, what does that mean to you? And all these, like, uh, people who've been helped by a charity came from all over the world, mm. living in Glasgow, uh, all recorded, like, what that means to them. So, it was like, a bit of the kids playing yeah, or like, like the dog like playing or just like came over and like maybe hadn't really seen snow before making snow angels <laughs> <laughs> it was like quite more like yeah, a pure innocence wow. there that it was class that's it was really but that was cool that was cool like stuff like that and that's like that i think like that's the stuff that we enjoy doing mm. in a sense like just like being able to like we've got this idea for like a video or an idea to bring these people to it and yeah. that people to it and let's try it and let's yeah. do it and like i just that's what we're still trying to do as a band and like yeah. kind of pursue our good ideas in a sense mm -hmm. and rather than like just we need, every to, idea. we need to be on the internet all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you speak quite like you attack a lot of subjects to, to gain towards like youth and young mm -hmm. people, and and then with the charity and everything. So I guess like, do you see that you have a responsibility or a role, or like what is it, or like are your parents quite political people? Because even your second album that started with the someone from the left wing uh, of the vocal, ben, yeah. Ben. yeah. So like, like, there's a lot political sense towards what you're doing as well. Like, what do you see your role is in all of that? No, I think maybe just like for us, like we're really grateful to be doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's probably a part of of that ethos, like that not to like kind of take this for granted and like I think it's important to be like doing it and we're a good like moral compass yeah, yeah. like That's it's right. quite a fucking crazy industry and there's a lot of kind of fucked up shit goes on yeah and amongst it and a lot of kind of like uh trickery yeah. and stuff like that i just think it's important to like help help where you can like yeah. you don't need to not everybody needs to be like you know you don't need to be a massive political act activist you don't need to be at every single fucking rally or like mm -hmm. but like it's like if you have an opportunity to help somebody you might as well like Absolutely. you take, take the opportunity when you've got the like, bit of platform that you yeah, can yeah, possibly 100 do 100 why not yeah, yeah 100%, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I actually have a present for you. Oh, um, nice. So, hang on, I'll have to stand up and get it because it's in my bag. I, I got you guys some yo yo's. Oh, yes. Nice. Thanks and so much. I was, because obviously your song, you've got a song called Yo Yo. But I want to know, are you guys good at yo yo's? Can you? It's been a no, long time. My, my girlfriend's actually good at yo yo. Really? Yeah. Let's see what you've got, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. terrible. Yeah, she is actually good at it, though. <laughs> It's a dying art, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't well, I, went, I went to buy one today, though, and one store, the first store I went to, was sold out. Really? Wow, it's making a resurgence. <laughs> Nice. I no, remember these like exact working. ones, man. It's broke. That's no, yeah, it's simply the yo-yo. I remember these. The, I can remember the these when I'm a kid. What the secret is, right? You need to stretch it out first. You know what is I'm saying? Right? I think so. That's what they. That's yeah. what they say. Ah, oh, man. No, I don't think this will make a comeback as much as I would like it to. Oh. 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 All right. <laughs> like that. Like that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thinking about that. About that. Oh, We're just like old guys now. We're just like playing with yo-yo and stuff. I've got a bowl of Portugal cookies. These are um, questions that are submitted by viewers and yeah. they're just, yeah, happy fun questions, so. Don't take the most obvious one. Yeah, oh, oh that's, that's an empty one. See what I mean? Just take an empty. Uh, <laughs> right. What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Yours has. Yeah, but I think I'm asking you. Ah. Oh, okay, you can do it that way. No, oh, so you it's me. Oh, you yeah, okay. do whatever you want. Oh, you do good, yeah, yeah. The most embarrassing thing. I don't know. Steve, I okay, mate. Oh, I am. Oh, it's just such a shit story, but it's my favourite story. I was in Mexico and I was, I'd had a few drinks and was like at a party, um, and I came out. The just to be clear, this never happens to us though. Like, yeah, aye, 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 so this nice. No, no, I don't normally knock shoulders with like people this, but I was at a party and I came out the toilet and a guy was approaching me. and I was like, he looks like Steve Aoki, and I was. And he was coming up towards me, and I'd like I'd had a few drinks, and I was like, "Hey, mate, I, was like, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this before, but you're fucking the spitting image of Steve Aoki and that." And he like pure like looked at me, like, 
and like just walked away and never spoke to me. And I was with uh, like Louis Tomlinson, and he was sitting in the corner, and I went to go and walk back, and he was like, Steve! <laughs> <laughs> and I actually was Steve. And then Steve I okay, sat at one side of him, and I had to sit at the other side what? of him. Oh and he never spoke to me the full night. Like, he did not even try oh, and speak to me. Oh my god! That's a good man. That is a good story. Yeah. Talk us through the art process behind building a live show slash tour. Actually, it always starts like, we are quite like paper guys. Yeah, so we so up. old, aren't we? Yeah, aye, so like, no, then we both got iPad pads last oh, night. Oh, we got iPads now. <laughs> no, we mostly, just... mostly we like draw things out. A lot of the, like songs and even stuff like that start like kind of silly wee drawings like, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, like for the tour, I'll say like, you know, like we wanted, and I think like one thing that keeps us certainly going in our band is like knowing that we can get to like a bigger venue next time or whatever mm -hmm. and we can bring this to it. Um, so yeah, like it starts like a little drawing probably. Um, right now we're set. It's not in here in Australia, but our set of homes, like the album cover, but like loads of like TVs all built up and mm -hmm. like it's a big rainbow and stuff like that on the yeah. stage. Like, there's like street light and like some cameras and like record players and stuff, like just stuff from the record. Um, but yeah, it all starts with a drawing and so phone cool. call and then somebody brings it. Like, we've got like a really good team around us as well and just like all kind of like young, like people are really passionate about what they're doing yeah, and like yeah. not really in it to try and make yeah. loads of money because yeah, because then the budget comes in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But no, it's because we're like all and... like we've got like a really good small team about us that we've had for years and just like try to do something cool awesome. all the time, awesome. lose loads of money on every show we do. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, joining yeah, sure. us thank today. Um, we yeah, I think that's all done. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much.